Today I'm giving you a demonstration of my morning movement and meditation Zoom yoga class, but in a chair. So this is not a practice along with me video. Instead, this is a simple demonstration to give you more accessible options for those of you who want to practice along with me in this 6 a.m. weekday class that I offer. So each day at 6 a.m. Pacific time, I get on Zoom and with the group of people from around the world and locally, I do a class that's called Morning Movement and Meditation. It's broken up into three parts, and I do have another video I'll show you right up here that uh, explains how I sequence this class or how I come up with a class plan. There are three parts to it. First is movement and breath. Second part is more yoga, like sun salutations and what you would expect for yoga poses. And the third section is seated meditation. Most of that's done standing except for the seated meditation. And I do say in that class that you can do this this class seated. So I want to show you the options for that. So we're actually going to head on over to the chair and uh, go through some of those options. So this might also give you some ideas for teaching a chair yoga class yourself. But again, let's do this. So I chose this chair here. It's a simple, regular dining room table chair. And what you want to find in a good chair for chair yoga is the fact that your knees can be 90 degrees, knees over ankles. You can sit upright with these 90 degree angles. Now, if you are shorter or your chair is a little taller, you can grab something like a block or two or some books and place your feet on top of them. So that can make your feet or your knees to that 90 degree bend. If you try to use a chair like this, notice I sink really far into it. It's not gonna be as um, beneficial as it would be when you have more of that 90 degree. So here we go, <laughs> we're going back to the chair. It's also more stable to choose a chair that's a little more firm. So our setup with our chair yoga class is we've got our feet underneath our, our knees and knees in line with the hips and hips underneath the shoulders. For this practice, I typically scooch forward so I'm really just sitting on the edge of the chair. If for some reason you need that support, you need the back support, uh, options would be to put blankets or pillows back so that it does push you forward. You still wanna be forward so you're just barely sitting off the edge of the chair. Uh, another option, you can grab a ball in like the kids ball section. This is just a little squishy ball and place it behind your back, between your back and the back of the chair. So that creates a little bit more support but does push you forward a little bit more. So that is your ball option. The last um, couple pieces of props that I do wanna mention that work really well for chair yoga. Well, number one, I did mention a block and we'll get back to that. Uh, if, for any, if for some reason you have a bolster, it doesn't have to be this big, but it's a very firm pillow. It's soft, it's firm. I will show you how to use this as well as the block in a couple of our demonstration for some of the poses. So if you have one of those, awesome. If not, that's okay. And also in some classes, you may need a strap, a belt, a scarf, something that you can you know, put in your foot. One of the basics for chair yoga, we're, we're making this very accessible for those who have a tough time standing or with their balance, is that one foot should always be placed on the ground. So if we're lifting a foot, your other foot should be on the ground. We are not in this class doing boat pose or going crazy with different intensifications. This is a much more modified version of what you would see standing up or uh, in other yoga classes. So still very beneficial, still getting a lot from this, but let's get into the actual class now and the variations. And what you're going to see on the side here or here, one of these two places, I'm gonna share myself doing the standing version. Okay, so we're sitting up tall and we start with the breath. So you can do the same hand gestures that I do when we're standing. We've got feet hip distance apart, nice and tall, feet grounded, and we take our hands up to the shoulders, flip the hands and bring them down. That's our base breathing. You can also do the same thing when we do our wheel breath. You just maybe won't take your hands down as far since you'll hit your legs. So you can still do the hand motions with the breath. And then we go down, you just rest your hands either on your lap or by your sides, whatever's most comfortable. Hands can even just be placed on your thighs. And we do head side to side, we do some neck rotations. That's pretty self-explanatory, very easy to do while seated. 
Get into some shoulder shrugs. And then our arm rotations. So when we're standing, we usually keep our hands, arms flat to the body, but you're gonna hit your legs. So instead we just take out the cross and we go more forward and back. So you can go faster or slower and same with each direction. So there's less of a cross, maybe there's a little cross, but it's more diagonal, less flat to your body. So that's the arm rotations. Then we go down to waist twists. So you can do waist twists from a chair, totally fine. Just take it slower. Take the hands just off the waist and twist. Make sure the elbow doesn't hit the back of the chair. So you can twist in this way. Um, if this is a bit like, eh, I'm not a fan of you know twisting while seated, it feels awkward. Simply do gentle twists. Place one hand on the knee and then other hand on the knee and go back and forth. Usually the exhale is what brings you into the twist. So the focus here is on this midsection right here where we're twisting. So that's gonna be your twist. So you can stay with you know, waist twist in the chair, maybe even a wider stance, or we can keep it to gentle twisting. And then we get into side bends. So there's one little difference with our side bends. I do pressing side bends. So we open the arms. Instead of pressing one hand down and the other hand across, you're gonna grab your chair instead. So you grab your chair and press across. That creates a little bit more balance and stability. So instead of pressing down and over, which is really tough on the core, sometimes it's a lot of core strength to hold yourself like that. There might be some imbalance. You're gonna grab the chair with the base hand and reach across. And then from there, we oftentimes get into leg kicks, high knees and high kicks and crescent knees and sometimes crescent kicks. For that, instead of swinging anything, we're going to start with just knee lifts. So a knee lift foot off the ground about a few inches or a foot, so your knee lifts. If you want to, you can extend the leg and bring it down extend and bring it down. So it's gonna be a lot more strength built in the quads here. And then when we switch sides, you start with the knee and you might stay with the knee, knee taps, toe taps, foot taps with the knee lifts and maybe extend. If you wanna do heel taps like this, that works too. For the crescent knees, when you go circle, it's an in and out in a chair. So one leg at a time, tap out, tap in. Like you're trying to lift your foot over something and we do both sides. No need to straighten the leg here, we'll keep it pretty simple. And that is the first section of morning movement and meditation, that's in a chair. And now we'll get into the sun salutations, which oftentimes are a little more uh, challenging to figure out for yourself how you would do that in a chair. Um, but I'm gonna give you sun salutation options as well as some lunges and warrior versions in the chair. Yes, you can also stand up and use the chair as balance, but let's say we're staying in the chair entirely. So here with our sun salutations, this becomes our mountain pose, this seated position. Reach those arms up. As you fold forward, you could bring your hands down or forward or out to the side, but your hands and your forward fold are gonna come onto your knees. So we do this lean forward. I suppose I should share you, show you from this side, right? I'll show you from this side. So we do this lean forward. The half lift is just a little lift, and then a deeper forward fold. So we never get lower than, uh, lower than the knees. Your chest is not falling below the knees. So that's our forward fold. If you wanna do, let's say, up dog and down dog, we can do a little arch of the back, just a little one. Roll the shoulders back, that creates that arch. And then round the back a little bit. For a down dog position, if we're holding in down dog a few breaths, we can actually do down dog uh, just flipped. So imagine the down dog position, but flip it so that your tailbone is on the chair and you're pressing it back. So it looks like this. I'll go to the side. You can take your heels out forward. That gives you a nice stretch in the hamstrings. Lean forward just a little bit and take those arms up. So that's gonna be our chair downward facing dog and take your time getting into it. So the transitions are gonna be a little bit different. You know, flex the hands and press. Good, and then coming out of it, if you're wa we're walking our feet forward to the top of our mat, back to our hands, we can simply take the hands down and walk the feet back. Forward fold and rise up. So you've just gotta make it in a way that works for you. So there are a lot of variations of doing that sun salutation in a chair. 
Um, but really I'm just showing you a version, something that you can play with. When it comes to doing our lunges, you're still gonna be set up in your chair, but you might wanna use a block or a bolster. We'll stick with the block for now because a lot of times this is more accessible to, to get for yourself a block or a stack of books. You're gonna take the block and place it in front of your chair and you'll sit on the side, right? We're gonna take one foot out to the side. We're just gonna walk ourselves out to the side. And then the knee, one foot goes back, one foot stays forward, the knee can come down on the block. So this is your lunge, your crescent lunge. We can get deeper into this lunge by taking that block a little farther back, pressing the hips forward. You'll feel this nice hip flexor stretch. And this is a great way to do a lunge. You can do it at the front of your chair or you can do it at the side of your chair and whatever we're doing in the lunge, you can add the arm variations, side bends, any kind of variations with this lunge. We can even do twists. So there's ways to do this. So this is your lunge. We come out of the lunge. You might pivot to the other side if we're doing the other side. Now for your warrior poses, you have two options. For your warrior pose, you can simply do the uh, more simple version where you take your leg out to the side and there's your warrior pose. So one foot is staying based in front of you and the other legs out to the side, creating this external rotation. Here's warrior two. You look over the right fingertips or the fingertips facing that outside knee. You might do a side angle or a reverse warrior this way, side angle, elbow to the knee, reaching up. The second way that you can do a warrior pose is similar, but we just add the extended leg. So you sit on the very edge of your chair and extend the leg back. So really you're just, <laughs> your butt is just on the chair and we open up here. So this is very much a warrior position, warrior two position, reverse warrior and side angle. Uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to do triangle from here. It gets really kind of funky. So for triangle pose, bring that leg back, that base leg, extend the other leg, flex or pointed and we've got more of this triangle-like position. So create that base foot on the front. So that would be triangle pose. And then there are other poses you can do as well that are very similar. The transitions are just going to be uh, up to you how you get there. So if we're transitioning with downward facing dog, stepping through, take the back heel down, warrior one, you will stay in your chair and simply turn the foot out, possibly extend, and maybe turn for warrior one. We can keep the foot in however you want to do it. We get this external rotation with our crescent lunges or kneeling. You would take the knee down. I do, for me, I do need a block or something to place the knee on. Um, there is a way where you can extend the back leg. It just depends on how you are feeling in your body. So use the chair as a, as a helper, as something to help you get into the poses that you might otherwise not uh, want to do. Now, second, of course, you can get up from your chair. If you do, lean forward. You might take your hands on your knees or the back of your chair or on your chair. Help yourself up and you can use your chair as balance. So if we are doing warrior poses, you can just simply hold on to the chair in a way that help support you with your balance. So that's another way. After that, we get into our seated meditation. Third section of this practice is seated meditation, which means we sit and meditate. You are welcome to stay seated in your chair. You might even scooch back a little bit and lean back and get comfortable. Um, if it helps you to add a couple more stretches to your practice or something that maybe you feel like we didn't get, Oftentimes I'll leave that option open right before we meditate. Just say if there's any last little stretches, um, do that before. And, you, and we sit. So you might have your palms up, palms down. Maybe you scooch back, scooch forward. You find a comfortable place. And while some of us are on the floor like this, you would be on your chair sitting upright, very similar to what we're doing, just with the legs down and more accessible for your body. Okay. 
that was our demonstration for how to do morning movement and meditation practice with me in a chair. So I hope that gave you some good ideas and some good behind the scenes and reference point for those of you who would like something a little bit more accessible, but you still want to join in to be part of the community. So you can use all of these options and versions as much as you like, and I hope to see you in morning movement and meditation class very soon. You can actually sign up it's free. Sign up at ashesyoga.com to join me and many others who are staying accountable to their health and happiness by getting up, waking up, moving, and setting positive intentions for the day. So join me, join others with or without a chair, morning movement and meditation. Can't wait to see you there. Have a great day. I'll also have all the other videos linked in the description below. So if you wanna check out any others, go ahead and do that. And in this YouTube video, you're actually gonna see a couple options, some more reference points regarding morning movement and meditation. All right, see you next time.